Hi everyone, welcome. What you see here is a variety of stuff from my freezer. Stuff that's intended for the worms. Got some nice strawberry here. Got some of their favorites, cucumber peel. Here's like the butt end of a head of lettuce. Corn cob, summertime, corn cob around here is pretty common to see in the worm feedings. Down here is even the filter from a batch of coffee. So, pretty generous feeding. It's really intended for a single bin. A lot of my systems, if you've been watching my channel, have been paired up, you know, systems that were launched on the same day, like these two and these two, they're just being managed as a pair, even these three buckets being managed as a pair. And one of the pairs is presently disjointed. It's this pair of, well, there's a vacant spot here, but that bin is the one that would normally get paired up with that bin right there. And I guess, all I'm going to say is that that other bin is on special assignment. <laughs> and I don't want to count my chickens before they hatch. So hopefully it turns out good, the product of that special assignment. So today, we're going to just be feeding this single bin right here. 10 days since the last check-in. 121 day old system. I can't recall how many feedings it's had, but it's probably due for a, a check-in and a little bit of food. Well, a lot of food in this case, because they're getting a pretty generous portion. I'm going to slip on a glove, get that system up on the bench. We're going to get to work. Now, over the past couple feedings, I've been experimenting with some different camera equipment than I normally use, as well as um, some changes to the settings that I normally use, too. So I was kind of going to pull the audience here for a little bit of feedback. I did notice the other day on one of these bubble wraps, when I pulled it off one of my systems, how many cocoons had been left in between all these bubbles. So I was just curious if that was the same case here. It's kind of cool. Maybe there's like static or some sort of surface tension. Whatever it is, the, the cocoons, for whatever reason, seem like they want to stick to this plastic. So like, you know, I could look pretty much anywhere and there's cocoon, 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 cocoon. You know, over here too, cocoon, cocoon. You know, they're pretty much all over the place. And it kind of makes you wonder, are they all in the plastic? Or have some remained down here? Seems like they're all defying the laws of gravity. Oh, there's one I think. <laughs> so I guess some of the some of the settings I've been playing around with involve some camera photography topics that some people might consider as being in the Greek language. And if I start talking about it, I don't want to, you know, come across like some sort of pompous intellectual. <laughs> But I have been um, playing at least one thing that some people may or may not even notice. Um, maybe video game players. Video game, video game players are very into um, an image quality that refreshes very frequently. So there's no, there's no like flickering like you see like old time movies or something where individual frames are almost visible because there's such a slow frame rate. When you get a really high frame rate, the motion's almost fluid. And you can even slow that motion down quite a bit to, um, you know, get slow motion footage of the action. Also pretty buttery smooth. And today's cameras can really push that envelope pretty high, you know. So I've been playing around a little bit with sort of doubling the frame rate setting on my camera. Instead of filming at 30 frames per second, I've been playing around with 60 frames per second. And I, I, can, I can tell the difference, but I'm sure a lot of people can't. But there is a little bit of um, kind of a different feel to the video for some reason. I don't know why. I was wondering if anybody noticed a couple of my recent videos were uh, in 60 frames per second. And this one's not, as far as I know, because I'm experimenting here with shooting in a higher resolution. So to trade off performance, I guess, I... Uh, I decided to keep go back to the older, slower frame rate of 30 frames per second so I can jack up the resolution of 4K. And if you watch my channel regularly, you'll know that I don't produce content in 4K or publish in, in, you know video content in 4K. Everything is always just in plain old boring high definition 1080p. And that's because I shoot at a slightly higher resolution normally and that gives me the option to zoom in without losing detail or getting pixelated image quality. So now, since we're shooting in 4K, theoretically we've got a whole bunch of extra 
high resolution, you know, capability, which would let us kind of zoom in on something interesting without losing image quality. So maybe once I get this footage up into the video editor, we'll try to see if we can zoom in on this nice and tight, perhaps tighter than we normally do to see what the quality is like. <laughs> this is cool. I'm just, I'm just kind of like checking out the corn cob here. Usually I'll give them corn cobs that have already been eaten, right? That makes more sense than just giving them fresh corn from the store. Yeah, but sometimes you get an ear of corn that just doesn't look quite right. And you just decide we're not going to feed that to humans. So the last feeding consisted of giving them one that had a whole bunch of kernels on it still. And you can see a couple are still in place, but mostly falling off at this point. And have probably mostly been eaten up. That's why we've got a little bit of a congregation of worms hanging out here. Taking advantage of the yummy food. So they'll, they'll burn through the kernels one, two, three, and then the cob itself will take them a greater amount of time to break down. But the way I remember it, we had play. Oh, here it is. Duh. How soon we forget. I can't tell. This doesn't feel like 10 days of wear. I thought there was another corn cob placed in here with the one that had all the kernels on it still. One that. I don't know, maybe they, maybe they did whittle it down this far. Interesting. I guess it just seemed weird because it was already hollowed out. A lot of times in 10 days, they're not quite that far along with it yet. Especially if right next to it, you've got a, something that's really going to cause a stir and attract some of the worms over to itself. So maybe they really did a number on that cob with no kernels on it. In which case, good wormies. <laughs> There's another channel where you hear the uh, the host, you know, giving, giving the wormies accolades when they've done a nice job. So it seems like they deserved it here too, right? <laughs> All right. So I guess one thing I noticed, you might have noticed it too, in the very beginning when I began excavating the feeding area, there was some dry leafy material down there. But it was a very isolated patch. So at first I thought we might have a slight dryness problem here and I don't think that's the case so I think we can get right to feeding we got leftovers and we'll incorporate them into the feeding but before we drop in that generous portion of food we have for them we're gonna put in a little bed of bedding <laughs> a little base layer of bedding underneath and it seems like following suit with a trend I've been establishing in most of my systems would be a good thing to stick to here too which is to see what we could do about being real generous on the bedding and seeing what we could do about increasing the overall volume of the bin. Sometimes it feels like I just don't run at a high enough capacity. It's like a lot of wasted space where I could really be get, getting a lot more work done. I could, I could possibly even be ending up with a greater number of worms because they could sense the extra space that they're occupying and they, you know, strive to fill that space with more and more wormies. So let's, uh, Let's get the food in there. My bedding's pretty damp. But at least the stuff I put on the bottom, these leaves are really dry. But somewhere between the damp bedding and all this stuff, that's probably going to kick off some moisture as it thaws. All those dry leaves are going to get perfectly damp in pretty much no time at all. So let's give them everything here. Make sure we don't leave much behind. So here's a couple more corn cobs. We saw one before, but there was actually two in here. And I think we saw pretty much everything else. There might have been a couple other things in here mixed in with the, the cucumber. Some other stuff with which a salad was prepared. Oh, and I guess here with the strawberries, we've got some shavings of carrots and parsnips, I believe, too. So that's a pretty nice arrangement. And now that we've sort of spread it out evenly, it doesn't really strike me as being that much. Once I took a bunch of that fluffier stuff like all these piled on top of each other and broke them apart seems like they were just concealing a bunch of air making themselves look a lot more bloated and larger than they really were i guess before we cover up we can maybe give them a little bit more bedding on top too i don't see any harm in that and i don't think it's going to be necessary to add moisture either i think we've got plenty in here just the way it is Sometimes I use drier bedding, in which case I would feel better 
including a little extra moisture to offset the dryness, but here I think we're maintaining a pretty decent balance. So let's, uh, let's cover this whole feeding area up, and at the same time it'll give us a chance to explore the two outer edges of the system too. Oh, look at that. Very nice castings and even more moisture there, oddly enough. I wasn't quite sure what to expect, but you know, at 121 days, one shouldn't be too surprised to see a fair bit of casting material starting to pile up, almost beginning to dominate the bin, at least on these outskirts. Keep pushing the middle out during each feeding. That's kind of what the outer edges are going to start looking like in time. And I gotta say, I like it. it. Looks really good. Moisture level is just perfect down there. Maybe a little more damp than you would want if you were going to be proceeding to harvesting the stuff and maybe wanting to see most of the castings, you know, drop through a screen or a mesh of some sort. But we're not there yet, so allowing a little extra moisture in the bin is fine in my book. Some people run their systems very, very damp. And I've experimented with going drier, going wetter, different things, trying to control the moisture levels to see what kind of results you get. And while the worms really are productive and everything else in a very damp environment, it, um, it kind of works against you in terms of just bin maintenance and harvesting and all that other stuff. So I've been really leaning towards trying to uh, keep things a little bit drier, but not so much that it would cause the worms any distress. And it does seem like the other practice that I adopted was the, you know, I don't know. I used to be real skimpy on the uh, bedding, and I would get a lot of criticism for that. And I tried to take that to heart and see if I can improve based on that feedback. And I think, I think the end game on that was that going big on bedding everywhere has nothing but positive and good results. <laughs> can I, uh, I don't know, can I give it a better endorsement than that? I don't think I, I don't think I could. All right, so now I did not take the time to pick that coffee filter out of the feeding that they just received. It just sort of went in there and I forgot about it. Luckily I got a few more here on the side. I'm just trying to, sorry, pull one over without <laughs> making a mess. These still have some coffee adhering to them and if I'm not careful, I'm going to have coffee all over the place. Well, it's too late for that. I'll be cleaning up here anyway, it seems. <laughs> I've um, I got a little tradition, you know. I, I like to mark where I last fed in my bins with a something, you know. In most cases, I've got a fresh coffee filter arriving on the scene every single day. And they start to stack up, so it seems like giving them a good purpose. Like, feeding zone indicator is a good way to give them a good purpose. And eventually they'll all break down too. So we're almost done here. All I got to really do is get things covered up and put away. But as always, I'll spare you the fun of that. <laughs> Cleaning up and putting stuff away is boring. But before I go, let me just really quickly say thank you. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, as always, please don't forget to tell me a quick thumbs up before you go. That's very much appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. Oh, geez, I almost forgot. I'm glad we're not quite done because I do want to include a nice dose of leafy cover. But usually it's underneath the top covering paper. So I have a feeling by putting it on top of the paper, it's pretty much condemning that paper to getting eaten between now and the next time we check in. Or at least that's my best guess. And then we can get things covered up and put away. All right, everyone. Thanks again. Have a great day. Bye now.